Good day mga kapuso and welcome to the 700 Club Asia. Here are your hosts, 1985 Binibining Pilipinas Universe, Joyce Ann Burton Titular and Miss Universe 1999, first runner-up, Miriam Kiambao Roberto. Oh, the <laughs> Lava with baby. With baby, yes. <laughs> Hello po, mga kapuso. Hello, mga kapuso. Nako, excited ako sa episode natin tonight dahil makakapanayam natin si Miss Universe 2019 herself, Catriona Gray. <laughs> Currently, Catriona is in New York City fulfilling her duties as Miss Universe. Pero kamakailan lamang ay nakakwentuhan natin si Catriona via Skype. At narito po ang kabuang panayam na yan. Hello, Catriona! Hi! How are you? Thank you so much for having me on the program. Oh, we want to thank you because I know uh, you you said you had the flu, you, ha you have the sniffles, and yet here you are talking to us. Maraming maraming salamat! It's my pleasure! Wow! So, <laughs> two weeks as Miss Universe. Can you describe to us a day in the life of Miss Miss Universe? Well, it was wonderful. You know, I moved here on January 2. And of course, the weather is very different to the home in Philippines. Pero okay lang naman. Um, I love the energy of New York City. Moving into the, the Miss Universe apartment was so smooth. Um, the, my Miss Universe family have been looking after me. Um, and I'm also housemates with Miss USA Sarah Rose. So I do have someone to kind of show me around a little bit. Um, and let me um, get to know the city from uh, not not necessarily a local, but someone who stayed here for a while. Um, and yeah, I've just been really busy with the media week, which was last week, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sobrang accommodating lahat <laughs> ng media hosts and and staff. And yeah, it's just been wonderful. We are so proud of what you have done, and uh, congratulations for million followers on Instagram. How <laughs> important. You. Has the support of your kababayans been in your fan base during the pageant and until now? I mean, um, even from day one of walking into the doors of Bining Bining Pilipinas, I always felt supported by my Filipino fans, by my supporters, and they're actually the reason I considered ever joining again. And I just felt that support all throughout, all the way up to the finals night, and even hanggang nayon, parang they never left my side, and they're really a part of my journey, and that's been something so fulfilling for me, to see that I can bring up so much joy in people, um, that seeing the reaction videos even or even just you know in times that I would feel overwhelmed in the high pressure environment of a pageant or I would feel unsure I really revisit the things that they would say to me their positive comments and then it would kind of build up my spirits again and I would be able to to carry on so I really do owe so much of what I've been able to achieve and where I am today to the Filipino fans well I think one of the ways you bring joy to your supporters is when you uh, promote Filipino culture, like you were wearing uh, Filipino crafts, I think, on your first or second day uh, there in New York. What is it about the Philippines and um, the Filipino that you would want to promote now that you are Miss Universe? Of course, being a Miss Universe, I am first and foremost a Miss Philippines, and I know that I represent my country through everything that I do. So I, a part that I'm so passionate about is sharing the arts that we have to offer, whether that be um, in the cultural aspect of dance, like I did in my national costume. I actually danced. I didn't just walk with it or um, in small textiles or, or small accents in my outfits to show our textiles and our fabrics because I really am passionate about sharing that in my own way because I do know that this is the livelihood of some communities. Yes. The, the products that they make sometimes support the community and I want to support that. And also, you know, just sharing aspects of our culture, whether that be my love for the food that we have back <laughs> home, our beautiful landscapes, but we are so much more than that. And, and, and one of the most fulfilling things was really conceptualizing, researching, and putting together my national costume. It was so fulfilling because when I saw um, fellow Filipinos comment and say, oh my gosh, Kat, I never knew that we had Tinalak fabric, or I never knew that we had that in Mindanao, or in Visayas, or Luzon. So... That was really fulfilling for me, and in my small way, I am just showcasing our culture, and I hope to continue that during the year. 
Well, apart from sharing the Philippines uh, to the rest of the world, what are the top three on your list that you want to accomplish as Miss Universe? Ooh, I definitely would love to put together a benefit concert of some sort. Yes. Um, maybe collaborate with different artists, international artists, maybe based in the U.S. or fellow Filipino artists. I really don't mind for a good cause because my love for music and being able to merge that with something that's near and dear to my heart is very, very fulfilling for me. And now as Miss Universe, it would be such a wonderful project for me to undertake. Second, um, I would love to just travel around and really learn about things that I could possibly bring back to the Philippines. For example, um, there are many countries that have been quite successful in addressing the social problem of AIDS and HIV mm -hmm. um, and treatment and breaking down the stigma. I would love to learn like how did they implement that program and if I could bring anything back to the Philippines to suggest or maybe put together a program of our own to further do good work when it comes to HIV and AIDS awareness, education, treatment, and support. Um, and third, I don't know. I would just love to be able to have a very fruitful reign where I would really make a difference. Like, I don't, I don't really mind about how many photo shoots or how many special events I attend. Um, ever since, like, for three years, I've been working as a volunteer in my advocacy. So what's really fulfilling for me if, if I can actually make a, a, an actual change so that would be what I want to achieve as Miss Universe if I can raise X amount of dollars for a cause or you know really educate and make people aware then I know that I've done a good job as Miss Universe well um, you've been doing a great job as it is your first two weeks and you are are just bringing the house down <laughs> thank you we also noticed that you are very vocal about your faith after you won the crown. Your first tweet, you um, attributed your victory to God and you gave back all the glory to Him. Could you share with us your story of faith? You know, my faith is really something that's carried me through a lot of times where I've been really down or, or downtrodden or felt like the weight was all, of the world was on my shoulders. Um, I never grew up in a very religious family. It's something that I discovered as a young adult and felt connected to and developed my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. um, and I still consider myself a young Christian. Um, it's something, my faith is, is a very personal thing to me. It's all about my relationship with God and I attribute everything I've been able to do to Him because really I do, I do lift up everything to Him. Did you ever receive Jesus Christ? Did you, you know, um, ever go through, you know, a dark season in your life where where you had to turn to him uh, uh, to become changed? Um, I mean, I always went to, I went to a Catholic school, Anglican school growing up. So he was, I always had him in my life, but I never had that relationship. Um, it wasn't until I was around 21 years old that um, I just, I don't know, my, lo my heart was longing for something. And I realized that something was a relationship with God and with Jesus. So um, yeah, that's just something that I personally pursued. I found myself in a good church. It, it, my relationship with God carried me through a lot of really hard times. And I can say that without my relationship with him, it would have been much, much harder to go through, if not impossible. So I really attribute a lot of the things I've been able to do to God, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, as Christians, we're called to, um, you know, share our faith in Jesus, you know, make disciples. Is this something you will, you know, you'll carry with you as Miss Universe? I will always carry my faith with me, um, but I feel that on certain, certain extents, I'm not really qualified to speak mm -hmm. on a large platform. Look, I have the platform, but right. in a in a certain way, I'm I'm I don't have the authority yet because I am I feel like such a young Christian. Like my platform is up here, and my journey is still down here, and I still have this huge space to grow and mm -hmm. and and in my walk with God. Let me just share with you, Catriona, the fact that you are opening up and telling us that you know you are a young Christian. I think this is going to encourage a lot of the viewers of of, of the Seven Hundred Club who may be going through serious struggles in their lives and then they look at you and they see perfection and they think, oh, you know, I want to be like her, but I never can. Mm. So what, what can you say to people like that who, who look at you and they say, oh, you know, I, I don't think I can ever be like you? 
I think people like to judge on the surface because, of course, on the surface, like I look, I'm always composed, like I'm always done up in hair and makeup and in beautiful clothing. I'm always styled. But I want people to know that behind that, I am someone who has overcome my own my own struggles. I really have. Um, I, I have my own insecurities, especially being such a public figure when it comes to social media. Imagine that not only do I have my peers and my family commenting on, on what I'm doing, but I have four million, millions of people um, all pitching in their opinions on me. And, and you know, um, I do have a lot of responsibility. I'm not just uh, responsible for myself only, I'm responsible for so much. And I think the image of perfection isn't a real one. I don't believe anyone's perfect. And, um, you know, you just have to have to love yourself where you're at. And if they do have a dream or an aspiration that they want to attain, don't tell yourself that, you know, you're not perfect, that you're not, you know, you don't have what it takes without even trying because you're stopping yourself from ever even pursuing. And if you don't pursue, how will you know? So if ever you have a dream, just, you know, prepare, whether it be hone on a skill, build yourself up with confidence or, you know, whatever you feel that you lack, you know, work in it just so that when that opportunity comes along, you're ready to gra to grasp it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why do you think God allowed you to win uh, Miss Universe at a time such as this? I don't know. I can't speak for <laughs> God in his ways. You know, he sees more than I could ever even imagine. Um, but I... I see this as an incredible blessing. I'm incredibly grateful and I pray every day for guidance um, and wisdom um, because as I said, I do have a lot of responsibility and I do want to, to use this platform for good. And, and so I'm constantly looking to him for guidance and I pray that, that I'll be a vessel during this year for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if there is one prayer or one blessing that you could speak right now for the Philippines, what would that blessing or prayer be? For the country as a whole, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I pray for God's favor over everyone, over each family, over each community. Um, I pray that God would build us up, not just individually, but as a whole, um, to really rise up and be able to to see to to kind of build and work towards a future that would be, you know, a more inclusive one that looks after more people one that invests in the betterment of the tomorrow rather than what we can gain today um yeah and really just just pray for god to build up individuals who can lead us in the right direction mm -hmm. well speaking of which is it all right if i pray for you right now yeah i would love that thank okay. you okay Dear Lord God, thank you for the life of Katriona. Thank you for this very special and precious time that we have with her on the air. Lord God, make her shine like Esther. Give Katriona a crown that will last forever. Make her the Miss Universe that truly loves the marginalized people of this world, just like Jesus loved people no matter their past. Make her shine for Jesus, Lord God, from the beginning all the way to the end. Bless your daughter, Katriona, with your love. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Salamat ulit. Thank you so much. God bless, <laughs> Katriona. Any final words for um, your fans? Just thank you so much once for having me on my on your, on your program, and also just thank you to all of the supporters, um, for all the prayer warriors, um, everyone who's carried me through this journey and continues to be by my side. Um, I can't wait to come home and celebrate with you all at my homecoming. Uh, we will have a celebration, and I would just I just love you guys so much. Thank you, Katriona. God bless you. <laughs> God bless the info. Bye I'm bye. And take, care of that, <laughs> take care of that flu, huh? I will. <laughs> we will pray for your health. Amen. Thank you. Get God well. bless. Bo. Healing, healing upon you. Thank you. <laughs>